Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Bucket Discussions podcast, the channel, man. Yo, whatever you want to call it, it is the man, Jay Coop, back with another episode of Jay Coop's Clips. And in this episode, man, I want to talk a little bit about this new look Clippers team that we seen last night against the Golden State Warriors without Steph Curry, without Andrew Wiggins. But regardless, the Clippers got the job done. 134 to 124 against the Golden State Warriors. And I want to talk a little bit about the new additions to the Los Angeles Clippers, Eric Gordon, Mason Plumley, and my man Bones Highland. So without any more waiting, man, let's get straight into it. Before we get into the new guys and what the, I think they can provide for this Los Angeles Clippers team and what we've seen them do last night, I want to talk about some of the familiar faces that we saw last night on the uh, Los Angeles Clippers who helped us overcome the Golden State Warriors to get a 134 to 124 W. And obviously the man man was being Kawhi Leonard who played 34 minutes, who shot 77% from the three and also tied his career high and uh, made three pointers with seven. And he finished the game with 33 points, like I said, shooting 77% from the three. So, hey man, there's really not much more you can ask of Kawhi Leonard, you know what I'm saying? When he does play, hey, that man really does come to play, you know what I'm saying? So uh shout out to Kawhi but the next man I want to talk about who helped us overcome this win was Norman Powell with 24 points he also had a plus minus of five which I mean you know do with that what you will but he shot 60 percent from the three and also 58 percent from the field in general so Norman Powell man I really cannot say much more about this dude he's honestly I mean without how streaky Paul George has been this season I'd say he's been you know our second third uh, option on some nights you know what I'm saying but Paul George he had a pretty decent game himself not scoring wise but he did become that playmaking P like how we wanted him to you know what I'm saying he finished the game with 20 points he also had eight assists with only two turnovers so I mean you know speaking about Paul George two turnovers really isn't that bad and the Clippers only had eight turnovers this whole entire game while also having a season high in uh, assists which was 33 so shout out to the Clippers man and We'll get into that a little bit later with the new guys provided for this team, but I think that was one of them, you know what I'm saying? Just more playmaking, more downhill movement to get to the basket, and it creates, you know, plays for the other guys on the perimeter, which is very, very helpful and something we've been lacking all season with Reggie Jackson and also John Wall. So, yeah, man, the man Terrence, man, also had a pretty decent game, if you ask me. He had 16 points. He finished with six assists, also five rebounds. And he shot 66% from the three and 70% from the field. So I really can't say much more about Terrence, man, dude. He's been so, so big for the Clippers, man. And the fact that he's still not really playing in fourth quarters due to Ty Lue's rotations or whatever the hell he's got going on in his head. It really, as a Clippers fan or, you know, as a fan of any team, like if this was one of your favorite players on your favorite team and you're watching him not getting, you know, any playing time in the fourth quarter when it matters the most and when he's one of the most productive players on the team is really frustrating you know what I'm saying so um yeah man shout out to Terrence man though he's, he's been really big all season for us you know what I'm saying I think he's like a 26 27 year old who really hasn't had that much time since being in the league you know what I'm saying I, I believe we got him in the 2018 2019 season I could be mistaken about that but even then when Doc Rivers was our coach Terrence Mann wasn't really getting much playing time and in this game he only played 26 minutes and really did not touch the the court in the fourth quarter which is just completely absurd if you ask me but hey man we're just gonna see what happens later on down the season but um yeah man moving on to these new guys to the new additions man I'm really really hyped to see these guys play for the first time for my Los Angeles Clippers because hey man none of their stat lines you know popped out off the paper like that but like I said earlier when it comes to just getting downhill and just making plays that guys like Reggie Jackson and John Wall couldn't really do like Reggie Jackson he's really not that fast of a guy anyway John Wall I mean he's pretty fast but I mean he's like in his mid-30s he just didn't play for like two years so obviously he's not really what we needed right but the main guy I want to talk about first when it comes to the new look Clippers is my man Mason Plum. So the man Plum Dog Millionaire ended up finishing the game with eight points, three assists, and also five rebounds on top of shooting 100% from the field and 100% from the free throw line, which is something you usually love to see, man. Mason Plumley knocking down that one-hander, you know what I'm saying? That shit's automatic. But, nah, man, he really did show a lot of encouraging signs, you know what I'm saying? Especially as a Clippers fan who we really haven't had any backup bigs, you know what I'm saying? The best we've had is like Musa Diabate this season, which if you, man, if you're, in, you ask any Clippers fan, hey, we love Musa Diabate, you know what I'm saying? But the, only, the problem with that is he's just a young guy. He doesn't really have that high of an IQ yet, you know what I'm saying? 
but uh, I think Musa Diabate could, you know, be something here in the NBA in the next couple of years, you know what I'm saying? Maybe nothing big, but I mean, he's had a lot of 2020 games in the, the G League, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to my man, uh, Musa Diabate, but, you know, thankfully we will no longer be needing your services. Hey, with all due respect, you know what I'm saying? Now that we have my man Mason Plumley, who's just been honestly great all season. Like this has probably been his best individual season if we're talking, you know, strictly off his statistics. I think he's averaging like a double double. He's averaging like 15 and 10 type shit. So shout out to Mason, man. The fact that he's our backup big and not our starting big is just insane. Like I genuinely think Mason Plumley might be the best backup big in the whole entire NBA besides maybe like Nas Reed. And that's kind of even a stretch in itself because as great as Nas Reed is, I, I'd still take Mason Plumlee over uh, Nas Reed with all due respect, you know what I'm saying? But the next guy I want to talk about when it comes to this new look Los Angeles Clippers is a man that I've been really, really excited to have on this team, and that is going to be Eric Gordon. Now, if you know me, man, you've, know, you've talked to me, you know, the past couple of years, you know how much I've been wanting Eric Gordon to be traded from the Houston Rockets. It's not because I don't like the Houston Rockets. It's just because they're not that great of a team, and they haven't been since honestly james harden left you know what i'm saying and the fact that he's been there with the young guys just not really doing shit is just kind of irked me because it's like damn bro eric gordon's one of the best role players in the league he was a six he was a six man of the year i want to say once or twice it might have been two times i don't really remember but he's capable of coming off your bench and just lighting it up you know what i'm saying there was a game against the los angeles clippers this season i believe he had 32 points uh, while he was on the Houston Rock and he played pretty solid defense, you know what I'm saying, that game as well. So the fact that we have him back on the Los Angeles Clippers, man, welcome back, my man Eric Gordon. It's great to have you. In his first game back since being with the Clippers, he finished the game with seven points, three rebounds, and three assists, while also shooting 33% from the three-point line and 28% from the, uh, the field in general. So obviously, it wasn't too impressive of a performance, but... Uh, the fact that he came in, he was getting downhill, he was playing solid defense, he wasn't letting anyone just bully him on the court, kind of how it was with Luke Kennard, and that was kind of the reason that we traded Luke Kennard, I feel like, was the fact that he was a defensive liability, and I feel like you can't just go out there and pick on Eric Gordon, we saw that last night where he did have two steals as well uh, on top of his performance, so... You know what, there's really not much more you could ask for, for from a, a guy like Eric Gordon who's in his mid-30s, who's been decent, man. Just a, not, a, a solid 3 and D type player. I, I mean, a little lackluster on the defense, but like I said, he's definitely a significant upgrade over Luke Kennard when it does come to the defensive side. So, yeah, man, shout out to Eric Gordon. But the next guy that we're going to get into is someone that I was hyped. As soon as, we, as soon as I saw that we got him on the team for two second round picks, I just could not believe it, honestly, that deal. But I don't think the, the Denver Nuggets would give up someone as talented as this guy for just two second round picks without there being any type of baggage involved. So uh, we're just gonna have to see what happens. But that man is that man Bones Highland, man. Hey, I'm super, super excited to have him on the team. One thing that the Clippers really have not had over the past couple of years since you know having Kawhi Leonard and Paul George was just some young, uh, you know athleticism some youth on the team to you know just bring that energy the, the most we've had is like terrence mann brandon boston guys like that who kind of don't even really get that much uh rotational minutes you know what i'm saying but terrence mann as of recently has been but like brandon boston he's still pretty much outside of the roster so the fact that we have bones highland on a team who still honestly come playoff time may not be getting as many minutes as he hopes but like i said man just the fact that we have someone uh, with the talent that Bones Highland has and, you know, with the upside he has, I really could not be mad at this trade, especially just for getting him for two second round picks. That was definitely, definitely a lovely move by, by my Los Angeles Clippers. But in his first performance, man, he finished the game with six points. He also had two assists, four rebounds, and he did also shoot 33% from the three, and he also shot 33% from the field. So in 15 minutes as well. So honestly, that stat line really isn't bad. But the main thing I want to talk about when it comes to Bowen Thailand and not just his numbers, is what he provides for this Los Angeles Clippers team on a nightly basis when he does play and does get his minutes in, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I just feel like Bones Highland was just a, a significant upgrade over Reggie Jackson when it comes to, uh, first of all, defensive, you know, on the defensive side of the court. I mean, obviously, Bones Highland isn't someone that's going to come down and lock your best player down, and that's honestly been one of his biggest flaws in defense. But, I mean, he's he's a pretty lanky guard, and I feel like he's just already a significant 
uh, upgrade over Reggie Jackson just talking about you know their build and stuff like that but if Bones can buy in defensively and you know just be as good as he is right now offensively he's, man he's really he can shoot that ball man that's one thing about Bones Highland a lot of Nuggets fans will tell you about he can really shoot the leather off that ball you know what I'm saying so uh yeah man shout out to bones highland he could really just stroke that thing pause but um yeah he finished the game with six points like i said and i feel like one of the the main things for the los angeles clippers thing is him getting two feet inside the paint and also creating plays for other guys outside of the the three-point line you know what i'm saying because an interview he had with the los angeles clippers when getting here he said he sees himself much more than a three-point shooter he can see himself as a playmaking point guard which i mean we don't necessarily need a a rondo a john stockton type point guard that's not necessarily what we need we just need someone that's you know can you know be a viable option when it comes to making a play for our two stars and also be able to hit an open three and stuff like that we don't need no rajon rondo we don't need a john stockton we all we really need is someone that can make a play here and there and also hit an open shot like that's literally all we need you know what i'm saying so the fact that we got eric gordon and bose highland who are you know pretty spectacular from the three-point range is something i love to see man and like i said I really do see Eric Gordon and Bone Thailand being significant upgrades when it comes to that point guard slash shooting guard position over guys like Reggie Jackson, who was just kind of aging. He's been kind of slow this season. I've, and honestly, that's kind of the Clippers' fault. I will say that first and foremost. It's kind of the Clippers' fault Reggie Jackson was performing that way because we put so many minutes and miles on his body over the past two years that it's kind of just like it really wasn't fair i'm just going to be real to reggie jackson because you had guys like Kawhi leonard and paul george being out with a little elbow injury and a little you know hamstring soreness but no this man reggie jackson was out here night in and night out performing maybe not the best but he was performing you know what i'm saying regardless so hey man shout out to my man reggie jackson i'm really gonna miss him you know what i'm saying and luke Kennard. luke Kennard was my dog as well but uh Honestly, I do think it was worth it for uh, the new guys that we brought in and uh, some of the things that I believe that they can provide for this Los Angeles Clippers team, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, that pretty much wraps up the, the new look Clippers first performance. We do play the Phoenix Suns on Thursday night on TNT, if I'm not mistaken. So make sure you guys tune into that game and uh, hopefully the Clippers can get a W for you guys because I'm tired of seeing them motherfuckers play TNT games and get their ass kicked. So... Yeah, man, uh, that pretty much wraps up this episode of Jacob's Clips. If you guys enjoyed it, you guys found it useful, informational in any type of way, make sure you guys hit it with a thumbs up. Uh, leave your guys' opinions in the comments below how you guys feel about this new look Clippers or how you guys feel about uh, a lot of the new look teams in general anyway. You know what I'm saying? The Lakers made some moves. Uh, even, I mean, the Phoenix Suns, they got fucking Kevin Durant, so that's going to be a problem. But uh, yeah, man, just leave your guys' opinions in the comments below. Uh, Hey, until next time, man, we out. In the jungle like I'm Conan, kind of a buff ass. Switch the flow like it was broken. I'm on the road, man. Making plays just like DeRozan. I shoot my shot, and that shit wetter than the ocean. I brag a lot, but with the wind and come the boat saying I made a lot from them apartments that I sold. And he didn't make it up to college, sold them streets when he enrolled. And I know I'm a scholar from the moments that I was exposed in.